I have this beautiful fabric and it's asking for a dress, isn't it? Now in this time of the year you always have a dinner or a lunch with friends, family or with your company where you work. So a dress is always nice to have and I love this kind of fabric in a viscose because it lets you dress it up or down. You can wear it on an everyday basis or you can dress it up for a more formal event. And I've seen a dress I like, fitted bodice, puff sleeve and a gather skirt. Really simple but nice. So if you like sewing, consider subscribing because I upload twice a week and I want you don't miss anything. And I leave you the link for my Instagram account in case you want to have a look at my everyday lives and everyday problems with the sewing machine and even recipes. The measurements you need are quite simple and we're going to make a sort of block. Well, we're going to make the pattern. So we need the measurement from shoulder to shoulder, in my case 34 centimeters, and then the width you want the strap, uh, your dress to have. In my case I'm going to leave it 5 centimeters. Then you need your uh, the bust uh, then you're going to need the bus, okay, the bus core, the bus height. Then you're going to need two very important measurements, which are the distance from shoulder to bust and then from shoulder to waistline. If you're not sure where your waistline is, you just need to uh, fold yourself and then that's where it is. And it's very important to have these two so you can place your bust contour and your waistline contour in half, you only need half of them. I'm going to make a square neckline because I haven't done it that much and I think it will look nice with this pattern because it's quite busy. So I think a bit of skin will help. And I'm going to leave six centimeters from top past the, uh, up to the neckline. And then uh, I'm going to be making a French dart, which are lovely. They are very youthful and they are nice because they include the bust dart and the waist part and that way you only have one cut so to the eye it's really nice because you're not cutting your fabric or your pattern. So for that I'm going to uh, take the difference between the bust contour and the waistline contour and these centimeters, in my case 8 centimeters, is what I'm going to be taking in. This is my pattern, the back is going to be the same but without any darts and to avoid the darts what I'm going to do is instead of coming straight down I'm going to come straight to the line my waistline comes to, the 34 centimeters. That way I think it'll look nice. And now with the sleeve, because it's going to be a gather sleeve, it's going to have a bit of volume, I'm going to just measure roughly. So what I'm going to do is to measure the length, I wanted it to be in my case like 23 centimeters because it's going to have a bit of an elastic band and then to make the cup of the sleeve we need a difference which is going to be the measurement from the inside which is 13 centimeters and then what I'm going to do is to measure roughly the, uh, from the shoulder down to the armpit leaving uh, a gap so it's nice and comfy and these 21 centimeters I'm going to double to make the whole uh, width of the sleeve. Of course sleeves can be traced, must be traced very neatly with all the measurements but because it's a gather sleeve and a bit of a puffy one we don't really need that much. This is my sleeve block, sort of, and even though it's a, it has a bit of volume, I'm going to leave it a bit more, uh, so I'll be tracing around with a few extra centimeters. And I'm going to trace with extra centimeters because I want a bigger seam allowance, so I can sew the inside nicely once I finish, I can hem all nicely inside. 
So my panel is done. When I started sewing, I did it because I wanted to make myself dresses. Dresses are expensive to buy, but if you make them yourself, you can recreate looks from the red carpet and from more expensive shops, which is the one I had the idea from. It's a shop and they sell the dresses for 300 pounds and it's a lot so I wouldn't get that ever in my life I can't um, afford that but making it for almost nothing it's really good isn't it with all my panels cut I'm going to start by getting the sleeves ready sewing them right sides together and gathering on top then I can start by sewing the darts and putting the bodies together so I can sew it to the gather skirt and finish the back with a zipper and finally adding the facings to the neckline and the sleeves The fabric is so slippery because it's a viscose that I went ahead and put some pins before cutting so I don't have any accidents. Once I cut one of the back panels, I took into account I wanted to pattern match the dress, so I was really careful where I was placing it, just to have the same drawing on the back. And the skirt is really easy to cut, because you just need a rectangle of material of the length you wanted it to be, in my case 60 cm. And now I have everything cut, I can start sewing panels together. The other day, who saw me on Instagram, saw that I lost panels and it's so frustrating when you have everything cut and all of a sudden nothing has shape, any shape you can figure out and they all look the same, it's so difficult sometimes. To start sewing the dress together we need to sew the darts and with pins secure them so they are aligned and they look really nice. With the darts done, I'm going to sew right sides together, front and back, by the shoulders and side seams and I'm going to try to hem it inside so it looks nice and neat. A sort of a flat felt seam, even though it's a thin material, but I think it'll look okay. And for the sleeves I'm going to sew them right sides together, hem inside, leave it as nice as possible and then gather the top of the sleeves and now that they are sewn I can hem them as well. That's the good thing about sewing uh, on your own, that you can do things differently, maybe you would like to hem right at the end. I like doing things as fast as I can and getting up from the sewing machine the less as possible. So I like uh, doing a few things as at once. So I'm going to leave the sleeves. Now the skirt. For the skirt I'm going to sew the two panels I have together and open up the back seam so I can put the zippering later on and I'm going to gather. So the best thing for gathering is to sew two rows of uh, two seams parallel to each other and pull from the same side. And with these two things done, I can sew them right sides together, the bodies and skirt from one end to the other because both are open. Good thing is that the seams can be joined together, so in the front there's a whole panel gathered and then the back are two halves panel.
The fabric is fraying quite a lot on the waistline because I've been gathering and when you gather you pull fabric and all these little threads, even more in this uh, kind of fabric, are fraying. So I'm going to add some uh, bias tape. I haven't used it this way but I think it should work. You usually use it uh, in coats and thicker fabrics but let's try, let me know what you think. Ah, I think it looks nice. Nicer than nothing. Now with the invisible zipper, I'm going to sew it, of course, right sides together and you need to open it so the little dents are towards the fabric and the edges are together and that way when you sew it with your zipper foot it should be amazing some people baste it some people i'm going to use pins and some people even glue it a little bit And one good tip to finish your zipper is to change your presser foot into a zipper one so you can get right to the edge. And now with the ruffle that goes on the bottom, which I didn't realize I should have had more fabric in the sense that uh, the skirt has a 280 meters gathering and I should maybe with the 140 width of the fabric it will have been enough. Uh, but I gave it more. What happens that now I don't have enough because it should be double the panel before or the panel on top so i don't have that much fabric i didn't think about that it should have been the other way around so i'm going to sew it uh, the same as it was i'm going to move it so the pattern doesn't match and uh, i'm going to add uh, some piping some yes yeah, some nice black piping from my grandma's shop that should be nice so everything right sides together with this in the middle and one tip when you want to sew something like this or you want to sew right on the edge of something something bulkier is to use the zipper foot because that way you can get really close a planchar eso what a mess a place to put nothing let's press this bit Ay. I was, I'm not going to cry, but I'm quite upset. I was ironing, I was pressing the bit of uh, the ruffle thing I did and look at this. Can you see the pattern? So the fabric in which I press my stuff on uh, just stain the, the dress. I'm really gutted. So uh, from now on I'm going to do it with uh, on top of this one I have uh, and I hope this you take this into account so it doesn't happen to you. So just be careful. I never thought it could stain mm, the stuff I was ironing on top. So just take it into account. 
And now, of course, the facing. The facing uh, needs to go on the inside of the neckline so it looks nice and I haven't got any seams there. So uh, one thing is that I've used all my fabric. I only have little scraps and facing should be in one piece so they look nice and you don't see any seams from the outside. So I'm going to use some black poplin I have and because it's a thicker fabric than the one uh, of the dress I'm not going to interfacing. This is one of my, I don't know, I don't like interfacing on facings because I think it changes the look a lot. So I'm going to do it this way. Facings are these pieces of fabric you saw on neckline so you don't have any seams seen and they are ideal because it looks really neat. Once you sew it right sides together, you need to cut the corners so they settle down and understitch them, which means sewing the seam you just did to the facing and once they are right sized in, you can uh, secure it on top, on the shoulders, so they don't move at all. Oh, I love how facings look. Look at this corner, beautiful. And now the sleeves. For the sleeves, I'm going to put the dress inside out, but the sleeves are going to remain the same. Right size out. I'm going to place them and secure them with pins, right uh, seams together, the side seam and the sleeve seam, and then the top, uh, right on the top, and so all around it and zigzag stitch because it's fraying quite a lot. And of course, now that I'm seeing this piping in black, I really like it. And I think that I could have done with that on the waistline as well. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to mimic it. Just on top, I'm going to sew some uh, satin ribbon from the zipper to the zipper so it looks nicer. I think it's going to have a nice touch and it's following my mother-in-law's tip. So listen to your mother-in-law. I'm in love with the fabric. I love the colors. I like uh, pink, I like orange, you know, my wool, uh, it's in coral. And black, I love black. I like the cut a lot and how it feels. And it doesn't feel uh, uncomfortable at all. The only thing I'm not sure about is the sleeves. In the beginning, I thought about gathering the bottom of the sleeve to make it puffy. But now that I see them like this, I like them. Although I'm not sure if in the future I'll change them. Maybe I tighten them a little bit. I, I'm, I don't really know. I'm going to leave them like this for a while and see how I deal with them. Because if I gather them, I lose the pattern which I centered as well. So it's a pity. I don't know what to do. But I love it. I think the black ribbon here, it's a, a really nice touch because it matches this. It, if I had known, uh, I would have added the piping here as well. But this was a change of plans, an emergency sort of thing. So I'm quite pleased uh, with it in the, on the whole. But well, it's things you change. It's a bit about the ironing and all the stain, but well, it's something you have to learn. So just uh, take it into account and remember me so it doesn't happen to you. 
And on the whole, I think it's a lovely dress. You can dress it up for a party because the material is quite sleek. Or you can dress it down and wear it on an everyday basis and enjoy yourself. And that's the thing I like about sewing. You not only recreate things uh, that you like, but you can make things from the a red carpet or from shops you cannot go in because they go uh, they blow your budget so let me know down in the comments if you do this and don't forget to subscribe and to give it a like and i leave you here a link to other festive dresses so you can have a look and see what you can sew bye